Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash Entitled People, where people truly think that they can do what they want, whenever they want, because they're the center of the universe. And in today's episode, it's all about bad neighbors. And Opie tells a story about this Karen who gets malicious and sabotages her in the middle of a winter snowstorm, guys. All because Opie won't bow down to her ridiculous orders. Guys, I hope you enjoy today's stories. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. Let's dive in. So I have an elderly neighbor who we'll call Karen. She's always been a bit of a complainer, but whatever, right? You get old, you get set in your ways, and you get crabby. Karen's also not married, and she's got no children. She's pretty independent as a person, and pretty strong for her age. Recently, we had a snowstorm one evening. Probably 8 inches of snow fell between 6pm and 11pm. I went out to clear the sidewalk, but it was heavy packed snow. So wet that it was basically slush. I start trying to clear the walk a few inches at a time, but I was mid-pregnancy with a sore back and I noped out pretty quick. At the time, my husband was doing 18-hour days sometimes, between working full-time, going to school at night, and commute. He returned home from work slash school at midnight and he was exhausted, but he went out to shovel a path from the house to the car. And that's when I did a very foolish thing. I asked my husband to shovel a path for Karen as well. I felt kind of bad because she was old and she didn't have help. And what a mistake that was. We went out on my porch in the morning to see Karen, and she was standing there with her arms crossed, scowling at us, and she was angry. She actually said to me, why the hell did your husband just shovel a path? Why not the whole damn thing? I tell her because he just finished an 18 hour workday. She then goes on and says, and he didn't put down enough salt. It was our salt, mind you. She then adds, if he's gonna do it, do it right, or not at all. I then said to her, don't worry, he'll never make that mistake again. And my husband hasn't. I refuse. The next time we had 6 inches of snowfall, I watched as Karen was outside for hours, shoveling by herself. Now it may be petty, but her behavior was unbelievably rude. I honestly don't think it's petty at all, because that woman was extremely rude. And Opie was treating her with the kindness that she deserves, which is absolutely none. Like the audacity, right? For her to complain about Opie's husband not shoveling enough, and not putting down enough of their own salt. No good deed goes unpunished, they say. So back in October, I received a notice saying that my apartment was raising my rent come the new year. I like renting, like genuinely love it, because I would say things like, hey, my water heater's broken, and then come home and it's fixed. I never had a problem, but a 20% rise in rent in one year, I'm not doing that. The morning I opened up the rent increase notice, I happened to see a cute manufactured home with a for sale sign on my way to work. I pulled it up on my phone and called the realtor. This was Monday, and she indicated the sellers didn't want it shown until Wednesday, and we scheduled a showing. I put an offer in the next day, and they accepted 10 minutes later. I then signed and closed 10 days later. It was an incredibly easy transaction slash process that made me very happy. Well, on my move-in day in early November, the retired neighbor on my left comes up to me while I'm helping move my stuff. And the first words out of her mouth were, Are you the new owner? Are you gonna do anything about these leaves that keep blowing into my yard from your stupid trees? You'd better, because the last owner didn't. Don't piss me off. Now, I thought that was a weird way to introduce yourself to someone. Eventually, it came to a head, where I told her, Hey, I understand that you like to keep your lawn tidy. Can you at least try to understand that I've been working 60 to 70 hour weeks while moving, and I'm doing my very best? I can't keep looking out my window all the time to see if my leaves are blowing onto your property. It's not possible. The property management company that runs the park straight up told me that I was in the clear, and I wasn't in violation of anything and not to worry about her personal complaints to me, so I just left it. I've had no contact since with her, when she realized that I'm not gonna bow down to her. This most recent Friday, we had frigid temperatures and high winds in the evening. I flush my toilet and I realize it's not refilling. I then test my taps. No water. It's already too dark to go fumbling around outside, trying to get the water going. So I go to the store to get water for me and my cats. In the morning, once it's light out, I put my coveralls on, and I head out into the minus 22 degree wind chill and investigate. The water supply comes out of the ground, outside the trailer skirt, and then goes through the skirt to the supply. The previous owners had built a well-insulated box around the water supply, but I saw that the access hatch was unlocked and cracked open, causing the water lines to freeze. 
so I call my dad and tell him that I need to borrow his heat gun. He offers to drive it over, but the weather's so bad with the blowing snow that I told him even in his truck he would get stuck, so I went trekking over. I'm fuming the whole way. I could have sworn I latched the door when I was checking my winterizing list. I could have sworn. Eventually, after 15 minutes of using the heat gun, the water starts flowing. I go back inside, get under my blankets, and get warm after being in the arctic conditions for nearly two hours at that point. And I still can't get over it. I know I latched that door. So on a whim, I propped my laptop in the window, and I set it up to video record, and went about my day. I woke up Sunday morning to temperatures of about minus 33 degrees with the wind chill, and go out to fill the cat's water bowl, and there's no water. I'm thinking, what the heck? So I put my coveralls on and head out. The access door was cracked open again. So I get the heat gun out and again get the water going. So I check my laptop, and not two hours after I started recording, the neighbor Karen comes waddling across her driveway and walks over to my trailer, and she leans over by the water and she messes with the door, before waddling back to her trailer. Seeing that, I get my coat on and I walk over there with my laptop. When Karen answers the door, she says, Oh hi, what brings you over today? All cheery and two-faced. I just open my laptop without saying a word and I hit play. Karen starts stuttering, trying to come up with some BS, and when that didn't work, she got mad at me for recording her without her permission. I just interrupt her and tell her to stop with her stupid excuses, and tell her that I'll be forwarding this video to the office, and then walked away. Monday, the office called me, and they told me they'll be addressing the issue, and that it would be incredibly helpful if there was a police report. So with that, I gladly called the non-emergency line. The cops were pulling up just as I was walking home. We came in, and I detailed everything, and then showed them the video. They wanted a copy, so I gave it to them. They then asked me to show them the water line, so we head out there. They took some photos, and the whole time we're out there, Karen was looking out her kitchen window. They see she's home as well, and they offer to trespass her. I head back inside, and they eventually come knocking, telling me they spoke to her, and they trespassed her. They gave me a copy of the police report number, along with a copy to the office. While we're out there, a neighbor couple across the street were out, and they asked me if everything was okay. I said it was, that I had video proof that Karen actually opened my water access to freeze my pipes. And hearing that, their eyes went wide. The neighbor tells me that their cover over their water line was also removed and broken off, and his water line froze too on Friday, and the repairs were broken again on Saturday. It turns out, Karen's got this ongoing beef with them because they have a pride flag that they refuse to take down. So the police went over there to get their statements too. That's when Karen's husband comes home. And shortly after that, he came over to ask me to retract my complaint against them with the office. And for me to tell the office that it was a misunderstanding. At that, I got mad at him and said, Misunderstanding? Your effing wife was intending to destroy my water lines in the middle of a winter storm, which would have cost me thousands of dollars to fix. He then mumbles that I'm a bitch, and then he pulls out his checkbook and says, So what's this gonna cost me to make this all go away? At that, I was fuming. So I tell him, well, I bought the place for $40,000. So let's call it an even $45,000, and I'll march over to the office right now. And I'll tell the office that I fabricated the whole thing. I'll tell the management that I straight up lied to get you in trouble. If you write me a check for $45,000, I'll make this all go away. Karen's husband told me to stop joking around and said he was serious. I said I was too. He says that they're on the verge of being evicted and kicked off the lot, and that I have to understand that his wife, in his words, she has problems. I was still feeling at them, so I say, well then, it sounds like the neighbors and I should go in on a bunch of security cameras to ensure that happens then. So we'll see. I wasn't going to set up my server, but I'm going to be doing that tonight with a couple of my webcams on some Raspberry Pi computers. I can't trust this woman, all because of some effing leaves that blow onto her yard. Holy, yeah, I definitely agree with her husband that his wife does have some serious problems. And if I were OP, I would have replied with, yes, your wife does have serious problems, sir. Her problem is that she's an entitled a-hole. Like getting that malicious and sabotaging people's homes and then smiling, putting on an act and playing dumb when confronted is something else guys and personally I think Opie dealt with it perfectly. And good call on the laptop out the window to get proof of Karen sabotaging her property. With that said, Opie does seem to have a good plan going on though. 
put the cameras up, put a lock on the hatch so it can't be opened by her, and then go full scorched earth and get them evicted. Because as sad as it is guys, you can't let up on people like this. And I'd hate to know what it's gonna escalate to when Karen realizes that she's not winning this war. But with that said guys, OP does come back with a juicy, juicy update. And here it is. Well, it's definitely been interesting. I installed four cameras, one on each corner of my trailer and one on my covered porch. I took my other cameras and installed them over at the neighbors across the street, who had their water line frozen too, by Karen. She watched me install them from her kitchen window and she waddled over a little while later to look at them and flip me off. She keeps waddling over every so often, flipping the cameras off. Trash day last week, she cheerfully asked me to help her move her trash cans to the curb when I was walking by. I'll admit, I snorted, and I was petty. I then put my groceries down, went to every lot on the street, and pulled their trash to the curb, except for hers. The nice old lady across the street invited me to game night. At first, I declined, and she said they were going to dish about Karen. So I went over, and we drink wine, smoke pot, and play rummy cube. These ladies were awesome, new friends acquired. I got all the gossip about Karen and my head was spinning after it all, so here are some highlights. Karen's got four adult children. Her three daughters haven't spoken to her in more than 12 years. The last daughter to speak to her actually lived on the other side of my place. But they had a falling out so huge that her daughter sold her home and she moved across town to get away from Karen. Her son is the only one in the family speaking to her. I also found out that Karen used to be part of another monthly social club that included a bunch of retirees in the community. She was kicked out after she kept going on tirades about the guy who owned my place, about the leaves and harassing a gay couple that lived on the street. The beef she had with the previous owner of my place started over yard waste, grass clippings to be exact. So at least she's reliable, I suppose. It also explains her deal with the leaves. In response to her BS about him leaving grass clippings on the lawn, he also stopped raking up leaves, so that explains that in a way. In short, she's just a toxic old woman who gets off on starting stuff with her neighbors. And her husband paying people off is apparently a theme as well, as he tried to do with me. The most egregious thing that made my blood boil just hearing it was a few years ago, she got off in this rant about a young guy in the park walking his dog twice a day. She kept going on saying he'd better not let that dog crap in my grass. Well, one day, the dog decides to relieve itself there, and as the guy was picking up his dog's waist, she maced both of them with pepper spray. Again, hubby paid the guy off and told him to not call the cops. The lady hosting Rummy Night talks with Karen. She says that Karen was bitching about me putting up cameras and how stupid it makes the neighborhood look. After taking a bong rip, the lady says to me, So I says to her, Karen, honey, if you're so worried about what's stupid, you shouldn't have tried to freeze pipes in the middle of the worst winter storm that we've had this decade, and they wouldn't have installed security cameras to protect their property. Apparently Karen's response was that I should have taken care of my leaves. So Karen hates grass clippings, leaves, gays, and being a decent human being. She's been taken care of by her husband, covering up her BS. And she's so incredibly toxic that three of her own children don't speak to her, or let her grandchildren see her. As far as the property managers go, I was assured that they're taking this very seriously, but can't disclose what actions they're taking to me. Fortunately, Karen can't help herself from gossiping or throwing herself under the bus. And after another bong rip, the rummy host told me that she received a letter from their lawyers with a correct or quit notice that any more complaints will result in eviction. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how long she can last before getting evicted. Yeah, so that update just proves that Karen's definitely just a mean, nasty human being, guys. And I believe that sooner than later, she's gonna do something that's gonna get them evicted. And I wonder how her husband feels about this. Like, imagine coming home from a long day at work, and your wife's like, hey, you gotta get the checkbook out again. I just pepper sprayed some people. You can't let me go to jail. I am curious though, guys. Like, how much money is he paying these people? Like, like how much money would you accept to not go and call the cops after some psycho wife pepper sprays you? Like I bet he's so sick and tired of writing checks, I would be. So I was raised in California and my grandpa lived out of state. He was close with his neighbors who I'll call Karen and Ken. And this was years ago. So being that we lived in California, I would sometimes see these people when I'd visit Grandpa. But we didn't know these people well. Not long after he passed, they came to California for the first time. 
Somehow, they got the impression that I would be their tour guide while they're in town. I recommended that they get a rental car, but they were afraid to drive in the city. They begged me to take them to all the landmarks, the Walk of Fame, the Hollywood sign, and to go see celebrities. I explained that the drive was a bitch, and traffic would mean hours on end in the car. I truly did not want to go. I also told them it wasn't like what you saw on TV. The Walk of Fame is not a really fun place to be. It's unclean, riddled with crime, and it smells like pee. At that, they laughed at me like I was making that up. Finally, I relented, and I said we would go if only to prove I wasn't a liar. My only rule is that we had to leave before 10 a.m. and be on our way back by 3 p.m. to avoid serious traffic. They blew me off. They said I was overreacting regarding traffic. When I arrived at the hotel to pick them up, they weren't ready, and they took their time. We didn't get on the freeway until closer to noon, where we promptly sat for hours. Karen was not happy about the traffic. She complained the whole way, asking over and over again, how people deal with this on a daily basis. I just ignored her. When we finally arrived, it took us a while to find a parking space, and they grew impatient. They demanded to know why parking was so hard to find. And I'm thinking, I don't know, it's Hollywood. So as I predicted, the ground was covered in trash, cigarette butts, and grime. They were shocked by all this and totally turned off, and they got mad at me that I would take them to a place like this. We weren't even there 30 minutes before they wanted to leave, disgusted by it all. As we were getting into the car, they asked if they can go to the Hollywood sign. The smog was pretty bad that day. It wasn't easy to see up on the mountain. So I say no, and explained it's not something you could just walk up to. They then wanted to go to Beverly Hills. I again said no, because it was 3pm on a Friday. And if we didn't leave soon, we were going to be stuck on the freeway for hours. I had plans at 5pm, so I couldn't be late. They both called me a party pooper and said that I was ruining their whole trip. They then wanted to meet celebrities, and they asked me to take them to a place where they could. I just laughed, and I asked them, where would that be? They didn't know. They assumed that I would know. They went on with their demands, and when they realized that I wasn't going to take them to have lunch with someone famous, they got really mad. I ended up just driving them back to the hotel. It was a waste of a day. When they got out, they told me how disappointed they were, and that I was the worst tour guide that they've ever had. At that, I finally had enough. I reminded them that not only had I taken a day off to drive them around, I had warned them about what we would find, and everything I said had come true. They felt I had wasted a day of their trip by sitting on the freeway, only to be in Hollywood for less than an hour before leaving. They wanted me to drive them back. They wanted to see where the famous people lived and interact with them. I just rolled my eyes at the idea, and suggested again that they rent a car. I then drove away. I was late for my dinner plans. They never once said thank you for using a vacation day, using my gas, or paying for parking for a total of 35 minutes. The next day, my sister told me that they contacted her, asking if she would take them back to LA. On the phone, they talked all kinds of crap about me. They went on how I refused to show them where celebrities hang out, and they were upset that I don't have any celebrity friends. When they were done, she told them that they were ungrateful a-holes for acting the way they had. She told them to rent a car, and then hung up. We've never heard from them again, and all I can say is good riddance. Well, I'm pretty sure those people might be living under a rock, guys, if they think everyone who lives in California is friends with a celebrity. Like, what in the world, right? But yeah, that is some mega entitlement. And on top of that, to then go and complain to OP's sister about OP being the worst tour guide ever and talking crap about her is ridiculous. Thank goodness OP's sister told them off. Okay, so I live in a three-unit townhome, and we're all good friends, and we share keys with each other. One of them is my best friend, who with my approval can enter my house when I'm gone to grab a soda or whatever she needs. In return, she cooks me food, and she shares alcohol with me on the weekends. The only thing is, she has the code to my house alarm, and this becomes relevant later. So one day, our entitled neighbor, Karen, who lives in a different building, sees her leaving my house, and she asked, what's up? My friend tells her what's up. 
Karen thinks we're friends, just because I'm friendly to her when she comes around, and she texts me to rat out the neighbor. I tell her it's fine. Now, Karen's very obnoxious, but we're all nice to her because you don't want to be enemies with crazy people living across the street. Karen, a week later, comes by and she asks me why I won't give her a key to my house. I make up an excuse that it's a safety thing because I'm the only one with a fire extinguisher, which is also a fact. And the only excuse I can think of now is my landlord won't let me. That seemed to shut her up. I really don't want her in my house, and as I've said, the others have a key to my house because they're my close friends. I can only imagine what she'll do in there, and her bringing her kids over to see my stuff. I have expensive computer equipment, instruments, all that stuff. I don't need kids around. So fast forward a month later, Karen sees me unloading my car of groceries and alcohol, and she quickly makes a beeline across the street. And she asks for some fireball shots, trying to make friendly conversation. I roll my eyes, struggle with the seal, and hand her two. She then says, thanks babe, love you. And I'm thinking, ugh, whatever, it's not a big deal. Meanwhile, she still messages me like we're friends, like I watch her house from time to time when she's gone. Last week, I'm at my mom's house when I get a phone call from my home security system company asking if I need the police. Roommates and key holders have my code and it gives you 60 seconds to push the code even if it's wrong. So something's up. So I rush home and my front door is wide open letting the hot summer air strain my electric bill and I see two cops inside. Then I see none other than Karen standing at the counter and she casually says, oh here she is, she lets me inside her house, we're best friends. Hearing that, my jaw drops. Apparently, she's got the garage door code to my friend's house, where she then found my house keys in my friend's house, and she's got the balls to take my stuff when I'm gone, like she's entitled to it. Then, she didn't message me that the alarm was screaming, she didn't let me know she wanted something, and she didn't even leave when the cops show up. It took the cops 8 minutes to get there, so I have no idea what she was doing, poking around with a screaming alarm. She broke into two houses, like it was no big deal. I demand she leaves, not pressing charges because I don't want a crazy angry neighbor. My city charges you $100 if you have an unregistered alarm system, so I get a fine from the city. I pay the fee and stuck the bill in her doorway. I haven't seen a dime of that yet. Yeah, if I were OP, I totally would have made enemies that day by telling the cops I want to press charges. But I don't know, guys. I've never been in a situation like this, thankfully. But like OP says, do you want to keep the peace and let neighbors walk all over you like this? Or is it worth getting them charged and potentially unleashing the crazy? Again, I would go the cop route for sure, guys, especially since she entered two homes without permission. But let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments down below. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy, crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash petty revenge episode, where a paranoid Karen is convinced that OP's trying to steal her boyfriend and tries to get OP evicted, and it backfires so hard. Go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.